right, well, Republicans are causing human suffering and destroying America's economic future. That's what I think. Tis the season to be jolly this holiday season. And of course, thanks to the Republicans, by the end of the month, two million more Americans will be left out in the cold with no financial support. Well, the White House just released an eye-opening report revealing just how destructive it is if unemployment benefits aren't extended. It could cost the country about 600,000 jobs by the end of next year. The economic growth would also free, go into free fall. And uh, a Labor Department study also shows every dollar spent on federal un unemployment benefits leads to $2 of economic activity. Now, millions of Americans are struggling to feed their families. They're struggling to keep a roof over their head. They're struggling to survive in many cases, and I'm not overplaying that. And the Republicans and their fat cat buddies on Wall Street are living high on the hog. The front page of today's New York Daily News, I guess you could say, says it all. 95,000 can kiss benefits goodbye, but Wall Street parties like it's 1999. Well, Wall Street profits recently had a record third quarter, and the high-end department stores, well, they're booming. Banks are hosting lavish parties. The rich are buying TVs, jewelry, wine, even organic dog food at record rates. But spending on everyday things like medical care, daycare, education, prescription drugs, well, they're pretty much down in the dumps. And at the same time, the unemployment rate sits at over 9% by tomorrow. It's predicted that the rate will be over 9% for 19 straight months. That would break a record set back in the 1980s. But Republicans, you have to really believe that they don't give a damn. They're against an unemployment extension, but fighting like hell for an extension for the Bush tax cuts for the millionaires and billionaires, that really is their priority, and it makes, I think, a lot of Americans sick, including this American. Joining me now is a fierce fighter for the middle class, independent Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont. He sits on the help and budget committees. We're losing our moral authority with the world. The world is watching what we're doing with families that are losing their homes. Senator, do you see anything in this lame duck session of the Congress that will move the conservatives off the top 2% issue? Well, I think the only thing that's going to do that, Ed, is if Democrats hold firm, and we say very clearly that at a time when the middle class is collapsing and poverty is increasing and millions of our brothers and sisters are unemployed, long-term unemployment holiday seasons are coming, people don't know how to take care of their kids, what we have got to say is, no, we are not going to give huge tax breaks to millionaires and billionaires and ignore the needs of working families. So the priorities have got to be not increasing our national debt by $700 billion by giving tax breaks to people who don't need it. Our attention has got to be on the middle class, working families, creating jobs by rebuilding our infrastructure, and as you have indicated, making sure that people who are long-term unemployed get the help they need. Senator, the Republicans continually make the case through the media that we can't raise taxes on anybody right now and go back to the old rates or it will absolutely butcher any kind of economic growth that we have had in the last year. Do you agree with that? Look, the Republicans say that when times are bad, you got to give tax breaks to billionaires. When times are good, you got to give tax breaks to billionaires. That is their DNA. That's all they believe in. In my view, the evidence is pretty clear. We passed these tax breaks against my vote in 2001. That's what the Bush tax plan was about. Yeah. During the Bush era, Ed, we lost, lost 500,000 private sector jobs, 48,000 factories shut down. We lost millions of manufacturing jobs. I don't think that these tax breaks have stimulated the economy. It's really a culture of manipulation. I mean, when you look at the Fed and the, the way they are disclosing what happened during the financial crisis, what's your response to that? Well, Ed, I fought very hard in financial reform to get that disclosure, and it makes you sick, and it just, you know, emphasizes, reemphasizes the point you've been making all evening. You have every single, without exception, major financial institution on the dole getting huge amounts of bailout. Huge American corporations, General Electric, McDonald's, Verizon, Verizon on the take, they're getting bailed out. And guess what? We're looking at billions and billions of dollars going to foreign banks, the development fund of Korea, the uh, banks in Bahrain are getting financial support.
foreign corporations are getting financial support, and yet when it comes to the middle class of this country, I guess we're not prepared to help those people. Senator Thursday, Sanders, December 2nd, 705 days until the 2012 presidential election and the day Republicans actually voted for a middle class tax hike by voting against the extension of middle class tax cuts. will hold that middle class tax cut hostage and hold unemployment insurance hostage and hold the START treaty hostage until they get tax breaks for the rich. But the House vote on extension of middle class tax cuts passed today. 234 yeas, 231 Democrats, 3 Republicans, 188 nays, 168 Republicans, and 20 Democrats. The bill will now go to the Senate to be ensnared by the GOP obstruction machine there. More on that in a moment. House Republicans, led by incoming Speaker Boehner, called today's vote a political stunt, not to mention calling it animal excrement. I'm trying to catch my breath so I don't refer to this, uh, this maneuver going on. Uh, today as uh, as uh, chicken crap, all right? But this is nonsense, all right? We're, we, the election was one month ago. We're 23 months from the next election, uh, and the political games have already started trying to set up the next election. And? Mr. Boehner seems to think that since there is virtually no chance that the House passed middle class tax cut will then pass the Senate, it is a waste of time. So we can then assume that when he takes over as Speaker, Mr. Boehner will not be condoning any votes on repealing health The president care. today saying again that middle class tax cuts must be extended as well as the unemployment insurance, and he alluded to passage of those jobless benefits as, quote, part of a broader package. Meantime, Move On has placed a national ad asking the president to stop letting himself get pushed around. And the Progressive Change Campaign Committee will run a similar ad urging President Obama not to, quote, cave. Let's turn to Representative Anthony Weiner of New York's 9th District. Congressman, good evening. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you, Keith. Finally, a vote. Uh, have we uh, become so jaded by political machinations, particularly those in the Senate, that a clear-cut, up-or-down vote comes not just as a surprise, but is painted by Republicans as a stunt? Well, not only that, and I know it's tough for Mr. Boehner to read the Constitution, but any tax bill has to be initiated by the House. You can't wait for someone else to do it. That's what we did today. And let's remember something for those of us whose memories have faded. The only reason why these tax cuts lapse at the end of the year is because that's the way the Republicans wrote the law. <laughs> so all we're doing is taking this hand that we were dealt, giving tax cuts to 97 percent of Americans, and now every single Republican is on record being against it. You know, if this is the way they're going to govern, this whole idea is if you don't give me every single thing that I want, I'm not going to vote for anything. Nothing in the Republican House or Senate is going to get done. Let's face it, I also thought there should have been some changes in this. I'd like to see maybe a little bit higher than $250,000 because I'm in a high-cost state. But if, the, if, if they think they're going to govern by simply saying it's our way or the highway, the president and Democrats are saying we're going to keep fighting for the things we believe in, which is fighting for the middle class and those that are struggling to make it there. For policy reasons and indeed for political reasons, could this vote have been held before the election? Well, I, per, perhaps it could have been. I think maybe we could have done this a while ago. But let's remember something. You know, despite the rhetoric coming out from Mr. Boehner, this is actually an area where I thought, and the Republicans, frankly, said we all agreed. We might disagree about people over $250,000, but we all, I thought, agreed that anyone south, which is overwhelming numbers of your viewers, w we agreed on this. So this idea that this is some kind of a stunt, this is called governing. The Republicans seem so unprepared for the responsibility that they now have have, which is to sit down, negotiate, and govern, that when you have a simple up or down vote on a simple premise of tax cutting, even then they're all no. Let me read you the statement from the White House and read it to our viewers as well. The president continues to believe that extending middle class tax cuts is the most important thing we can do for our economy right now, and he applauds the House for passing a permanent extension. But because Republicans have made it clear that they won't pass a middle class extension without also extending tax cuts for the wealthy, the president has asked Director Liu and Secretary Geithner to work with Congress to find a way forward. Is that a satisfactory statement in your opinion or did that did it start well and kind of poop out at the end? Did, is there more leadership needed out of the White House on this? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know, but it's kind of like saying if you don't stop punching me in the nose for the in the next two hours, I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> I mean, look, the fact is I think the president needs to understand what many of us on Capitol Hill have known for quite some time now. The Republicans are simply going to vote no on just about every single thing. It's their only thing that unifies them, the fact that they're against everything. So even when you say tax cuts, I thought 
they were the party that liked tax cuts, they're unified as a no. Look, the president is pursuing bipartisanship. He should be commended for doing that. But just like a child looks for a unicorn, sooner or later you go on with your life realizing you're not going to find one. I think that's the place that Democrats have to be right now. Well, you can keep looking for them, but not around every corner, maybe out of one out of five. Right. If, if, uh, if ultimately Democrats accept a temporary extension of the full range of cuts, including those for the wealthy, is there, do you have a sense that at least there will be a deal that will include the extension of, of jobless benefits? Well, I do know what we believe and what we want to fight for. We believe that the, the jobless benefits have to be extended. The START Treaty is basically done. It just has to be signed off on. A lot of the accommodations for people like Senator Kyle are already baked into that, that deal. I know things like don't ask, don't tell. I, I know things like, the, like the, um, the, the immigration bill that would allow people who are in college to continue to be able to stay there. But we Democrats have this exaggerated fidelity to governance. We have to realize any deal has to include someone to deal with. Mm -hmm. Show me a Republican in this town that's prepared to have any kind of adult conversation about governing, and I will show you that they don't exist right now. Hopefully, Mr. Boehner will be that way, but he's not that way today. Congressman Unicorn of uh, Unicorn Land might be available to you to negotiate. That might be the best one. Uh, yes. con Congressman Anthony Weiner of New York, who actually, actually represents an actual district. Thank you kindly, sir. Thank you, sir.